Hey, what's going on guys? Money Making Joey back here doing another video. I need all of you guys out there watching this video to do me a favor. If this is your first time seeing me here on YouTube watching one of my videos, do definitely go ahead and get subscribed to the channel. It would really help us out. And then at the end of watching this video, if you found some value, some good information from it, do definitely help us out and give this video a thumbs up. For all of you out there watching this video that's been subscribed to the channel for some time, thank you for rocking with me. I definitely do appreciate it. This is going to be a short video. A lot of the times that I make YouTube videos, I'm either trying to do one of two things. I, I want to educate you guys or I'm just really making a video to open your eyes to something and make you think just a tad bit because... I would like to believe, and, and you know, you guys let me know if I'm wrong, but when I look around the YouTube space for all of those out there that are making videos contributing to the space, you know, for rideshare drivers, you know, there's a lot of good information out there, but I definitely do try to make the videos that are just a little bit different and kind of gives you a different perspective because... While I don't like to look at everything as being negative, you know, we could do positive energy or whatever the case may be, but the fact will still remain that everything is not perfect. So with the concerns to ride share, driving on Uber, driving on Lyft, I have actually been in the business, I guess you can say since 2017. I first initially started out doing Uber Eats and it wasn't that bad because back in you know, 2016, 2017, actually, I think it's 2017, I didn't have a, a newer model car. It was an older car, you know, and I made way more money doing Uber Eats than that car was actually worth. I transitioned into doing rideshare when things started to dry up and money wasn't the same anymore with Uber Eats, probably around uh, 2019, right before the pandemic. Um, when I first started doing rideshare, I was renting a car. I didn't actually own the vehicle that I did rideshare in until uh, sometime in 2021. If you can, if you've been subscribed, checking out my videos, the video is still up. Um, it's the Tower TLC video when I returned that vehicle and I bought my own. This vehicle that I'm currently sitting in right now, you guys can't tell. I'll probably edit some stuff in here to give you a tour of the outside, inside. But the vehicle that I have is a 2018 Hyundai Tucson, a 1.6 liter engine. And I own this car now for two and a half years. Bought it um, mid-2021, two and a half years. When I first initially purchased this vehicle, it had slightly above 32,000 miles on it. Currently today at the point of making this video, this vehicle has uh, about 111,000 miles on it. I've only owned this vehicle for two and a half years. We've went from 32,000 to 111,000. And this is all due to me being in the rideshare industry, driving on the Uber platform, driving on the Lyft platform. That is a lot of miles when you actually think about it. 80, I've put just about 80,000 miles on this Pacific vehicle in two and a half years. Now, prior to me driving in the rideshare industry, I did drive a lot. I think my typical annual mileage on a vehicle would be somewhere between maybe 12 and maybe about 12,000. Let's have, let's go ahead and say that. But now that I'm driving on the Uber and Lyft platform, my annual mileage is somewhere around 30, 35,000 ish. And keep in mind, I only drive part time. Typically on a week's average is about 25 hours, 30 hours ride share. And I say that because that's part-time numbers. For someone out there that's partaking in the ride share industry that's driving full-time, I'm going to say that they're probably averaging 50 to 60,000 miles along with personal driving that they're putting on their vehicle. 
Um, this is not something that's widely spoke about on YouTube. And I think it's definitely something that's important to note for anyone out there that's considering getting into the ride share industry or you're someone that drives your own personal vehicle in the ride share industry. It's definitely worth us speaking on this. Um, if you're someone out there who's renting a vehicle, um, I have made videos previously stating that I am not a fan of renting vehicles. And even though I'm packing on these miles, devaluing my vehicle, spending a whole lot of money on maintenance. And another PSA before I forget that I definitely want to put out there. If you're driving a Hyundai for ride share, it's not a good idea. Um, prior to this, I, well, two vehicles prior to this, the first vehicle that I rented for ride share was a Hyundai Sonata. It was okay. Gave me some problems, but then again, I didn't own it. Well, rent it for that long. It was probably about a year. Um, I've been driving and owning this Hyundai Tucson, which is my second Hyundai, you know, actually for some time, two and a half years. So, I'm kind of rolling with the punches a, a little bit. Now, if you do your research on, you know, Hondas, you'll pull up some horrible information, horrible engines, horrible transmissions, and I'm a living proof of that because here's the kicker. On top of maintenance um, in these 80,000 miles, like oil changes, changing tires, changing battery, things like that, in this vehicle, this Hyundai Tucson that I've owned for two and a half years, I've put an engine, well, I put a transmission in first. I had a transmission job that I did a year before last. This was actually after owning the vehicle for a little over a year, October of 2022. I kicked out over $4,000 to replace the transmission. And I am actually just two weeks old of putting another engine inside of this car, which cost me about $7,000. So with replacing the transmission and replacing the engine, I'm probably well a little bit north of $11,000 that I've put into this vehicle. And that does not include tires, oil changes, other maintenance that actually needed to be done. And I feel that this is an important video because you, I, I've actually never seen a, a YouTuber tell you that I, because of Rideshare, I've put a transmission and I've put an engine in my actual vehicle. It's not too many people. Like you might hear about it, but it's not too many people that actually says this. So. And I wanted to make this video short. I just want to make you think. That's it. I, I want the conversation to actually be had because um, a lot of people will promote to you that you can make all this money in the rideshare industry. Um, in one of my previous videos, I made sure to point out, hey, yes, it's definitely possible to go out there and make $2,000 a week but you're not actually making $2,000 a week due to the fact that you may have tolls. You're definitely gonna have gas and you're gonna have maintenance like oil changes and changing tires and things like that. But what actually happens when you're driving a vehicle that you own two years down the road, three years down the road, because you're putting so many miles on it eventually you're going to find yourself just like me in a predicament where you have very large repair bills. So imagine I bought the vehicle 2021, 2022, we had an unexpected $4,000 repair bill. 2023, we had an unexpected $7,000 repair bill. And it's perfect timing of making this video because guess what? At the point of making this video, today is January 3rd. We're coming right up on tax season. So all of you out there watching that's in the ride share industry, I want you to do me a favor. Because again, I'm just here to make you think. When you get that 1099, do me a favor, right? Do your deductions, take the gas, take your, your, your maintenance out, your oil changes, your tires, battery, things like that, right? But... 
Even if you're someone who's never had this happen to you where you had to kick out four to $7,000 on maintenance, factor those numbers in. Just factor them in because I don't mean to be, you know, talking negative, some might say, but if you're someone that owns a vehicle and you're in ride share and you're chucking on 30, 40, 50,000 miles a year, the reality of it all is, is that if you haven't had what happened to me happen to you, it's pretty much safe to say that it's only a matter of time before you find yourself floating in the same boat as me. Unless you take this opportunity during this wonderful tax time to really sit down and crunch those numbers and do some mathematics and see if it's worth it for you. That way, maybe you could get an early realization before I did. And, you know, hey, is this worth it for me? And you could get yourself into a position where you could potentially transition out of this industry because I got news for you. It's not good right now and it's not going to get any bit better. Another interesting point of when you sit down and you do the numbers for your taxes, if you take the standard deduction, guess what? The standard deduction is 66 cents per mile. That's not too far off of what we already get per mile. Don't you see something wrong with that? So, I mean, like I said, it's not going to get any better. So you really have to crunch your numbers over the long term. I feel like too many different people out there, they're only looking at, hey, what I made this week. Hey, what I made this month. And they're not really looking at it as what are the numbers for this year? What are the numbers over the next three years? Like you understand, like really looking at it as if it's an actual business. Um, too many times I feel like once you get started in the industry and you get caught in that loop, you're just caught in that loop and time goes by and it's been five years and, you know, You've never really crunched the numbers because honestly, you've been too much on the road and you've never had time to. But with all that I've actually just said, is ride share really a bad idea? Here's where we start to put some positivity on it. I gave you guys the negative, but right now we're going to put some positivity on it where it's like, if I really feel like if you're someone that's doing it part time or looking to do it part time, you might want to reconsider. But for all of us out there that does this part time and, and you have other things going on, like for me, I'm able to save my eBay business money, my storage auction business money. And I solely drive 25 to 30 hours a week to be able to pay my bills. So all of this other money I don't have to touch. So no matter what, I do see it as a win win because it kind of gives me the ability to work on my own time. I still do have time to put into Uber and Lyft and, and I don't have to work on a schedule and I'm free to devote my time to other things that are going on inside of my life. So as far as that aspect goes, you know what? Yes, it, it's still worth it. I'm, I'm still gonna continue to, to roll with the punches and keep on moving. But I'm here to make you think, does it work for your situation? I don't know. You guys let me know down in the comments didn't want to make this video too long. Money making Joey, I'm out of here and I will see you guys in the next one.